Yeah, I feel like a dinosaur. Absolutely. And I'm a vegetarian dinosaur, so it's a place, you know, I'm from the Pleistocene era. My parents made me study art education because they knew there's no way she's going to have a career. She has to earn a living. And uh, I took a photo class by accident. We had Yashikas, which are two and a quarter cameras. A meter cost $40. This is 1967. I went crazy. It meant the whole world opened up. Finally, what I saw became an image. Just, I really couldn't draw, but I could see. But finally, what I saw was an image and I could explore. And even though I was a very shy person who really didn't have friends, I was always drawn to photographing people. <laughs> I can't understand it. Probably everyone's very first pictures are really important. I mean, you can just get into the core of something. Uh, and then many people just don't continue, or they, they start making bad pictures, and they don't work out how to make the next good thing. And uh, I remember the first picture I took. Uh, 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 you remember things that you photograph. You don't, I don't remember most of my life, but I can remember what I photograph. Because <laughs> you have a photograph to constantly remind you, right? It was a piece of trash on, the, on a cobblestone street in Philadelphia. The assignment was to look for light. I thought, what is that? I don't know what light is. But there was this raking light coming across an old cardboard box crushed into a triangular shape. I, to this day, think the thing is really beautiful and very mysterious. Who knows? It, it got connected with the mis mystery of life through making images. Real connection. I knew right away, and my teacher didn't. My teacher gave me a B, which is a, not the best grade, so I thought he was an idiot, because I am an arrogant person. <laughs> A long time ago, view camera was very important. You had Edward Weston, Atchay, Sander, uh, O'Sullivan, everybody that made really great pictures used, many people used view camera. It wasn't unusual. I just got old, you know, but I can't, I can't see through other cameras. My eyes are really bad. I have a lot of tremor. I can't hold it. Uh, I really can't see to focus. A very bad double vision. <clears throat> and when I, underneath the camera, whether anything about my vision, who cares? I, it's so magnificently beautiful. It's upside down and backwards, true. But uh, have you seen through a view camera? <sighs> you could just pay admission just to look through the camera. It's so mysterious. So you have a lens, a dark chamber, and I can take the ground glass off, and with the cloth over my head, I can move the ground glass back and forth, and you'll see this image floating there, upside down and backwards of whatever's in front of you. I'm sorry, it's just so beautiful. In the old days, anyone could take their work to the Museum of Modern Art on a Wednesday, leave it, come back Thursday, they would have looked at it. The staff, John Sharkowski, and the other members of, this, of the curatorial staff would look at this work. If they found something interesting, they might tell the artist, we, we have faith in you, keep working. Or if they, they thought it was worth collecting, they would, you get invited in to this inner sanctum. Unbelievable. So I had taken my work once and nothing, and took it a year later, and Everything mattered, everything, everything. It, it was the most important thing to do because it was do or die. You make this up in your mind. And I got in, invited in but to speak to John Sharkowski. <clears throat> and he said, Judith, 
Were you aware of the work of August Sonder? And I denied it <laughs> because I didn't want him to think I was cheating. But of course, I was copying August Sonder, and he knew it. <laughs> so he told me it was okay. It's called tradition to uh, love the work of another photographer because he knew I was lying. <laughs> This is the work he saw was Urena Park, and I could not have made that work without being in love with the work of August Sonder. At Urena Park, I needed to find a place where there was no pain, because I was mourning the death of my father. I couldn't look at adults. All adults seemed to have pain in their face. The children didn't, maybe a little. <coughs> So it was a safe place to work. And uh, Vietnam, I wanted to see how people deal with pain and suffering. And when I figured out they had built that wall, uh, I knew that's where I would go. Otherwise, I would have gone out on the street and literally asked people, <laughs> total strangers, how do you deal with pain and suffering? And if they hadn't walked away, I would have made their picture. But guess what? I didn't have to ask anybody, how do you deal with pain and suffering? Because that's what was at the memorial, right? That's what was there 10 years after the war. Okay, and then I had to do Congress because I had to know, I had to know who they were. Okay, now I've finished. So I, series is good. The Hazleton Public Schools. I wanted people, that's three years of really, really hard work being in the same schools I was as a child. Oh my God, you regress, you regress, you go, I did. I turned into, I wasn't an adult. I was like a child. Um, because the memories flush come back as it was the same buildings, the same, not the same furniture, the furniture was now metal. Furniture used to be wood, same wall decor. And everything seemed the wrong size because I had been this high, or I had been this high, and now I'm much higher. So it was a time trip. Uh, if I had gone to any public school, it would have been different because there was no memories. So even though there are very little details in the environment, the, that it made me really, really, really experience what the children did. And I could go into a classroom, I could pick out the kid who needed to be photographed. That's what I think I did. The person who most needed to be paid attention to. Is that personal? Probably. <laughs> that's what I just, I guess that's what I do, identify with them, period. That's all I need. It's like a battery charge. And then I go back to my, my isolated life <laughs> and, make, and print the pictures. <laughs> how, can you, how can you define war? I couldn't presume to. It's too enormous. But this one, I was just too angry. And it was too wrong. It was just it was just too much. You're not allowed to talk about the war in, in America. You were pretty much I was like a vulture. I was going there for to look for faces of people who were upset. Uh, I I was using people and I wasn't interested in their personal life at all for the first time. I've always been interested in a person's private life, their, their soul, their, what their history might be, what, what they're going through. This was no, this was propaganda I was making. This was, uh, are you against the war? Yes, may I photograph you? Yes, and then we, we make a picture. And, and I felt both of us together, as I always do, we're all, we're together we're making a picture. They're giving me, I'm getting. I'm encouraging them, they give me more. We, we both might be actually in love for a few seconds. 
I'll never see them again. <laughs> um, I, feel, I began to feel a little guilty about how intense an exchange is with a complete stranger. I, sometimes I, I would hug someone because we both felt, I think we both felt so moved by how they felt and how I felt about what they were doing. I photograph Congress only because not, I'm not interested in power, I'm interested in do they actually, are they actually human? So I met some, <laughs> because the photographs that, for example, you have right now for voting, I'm very amused by them because they look like maybe it's a dating game. Pick this man, pick this woman for a date. I'm not sure what they're about. You can't tell about anybody from those pictures, can you? Uh, <clears throat> what a waste of paper, but uh, they have to do something. They're not gods, they're not demons. They're, unfortunately, they're human, which means things are really messed up. Or work, work. It's low, a democracy, which I'm not sure America is anymore, since corporations have the same rights as individuals in America. Um, yeah, no, I proved that they're human. They're very ordinary looking, those portraits, right? I don't want to make them beautiful so that it's like a wonderful, luscious still life or painting. Well, not that a still life or painting has to be. I like ordinary because that's what photographs do. That's photographs shows you all kinds of dumb things. Um, and I find that beautiful. I like the Congress pictures immensely. And there's one I have in my bedroom of uh, the Republican uh, his name is Hiller, H-I-L-E-R. He has a very, very good suit. He's very frightened that I'm photographing him. He's tense. His, his face is an amazing kind of shape. He has a boyish openness, and he's also closed completely. Uh, it's a very complicated face, and I love looking at this picture all the time. I would not want to be him. In fact, no, but I think it's a very accurate, amazing portrait of someone that I don't know. I mean, it was crazy for me to be at the Vietnam Memorial. I needed to be there for me, for my understanding of how to deal with pain and suffering. But looking back, I think it was very inappropriate for me to be at this memorial. I mean... Other people were there with big cameras and long lenses, and that's just fine. But to be standing there day after day for two, you know, during a period of time over two years with a tripod, I think that's creepy. But I don't have great social graces, so I didn't get it. <laughs> I was... I wondered, why aren't there other people taking pictures here? Well, they were. They were taking pictures with long telephoto lenses, probably of something awful like a teddy bear and a rose at the bottom of the memorial. So the pictures I took don't even show the memorial. And I felt enormously guilty. Am I here torturing people for no good reason? Uh, and I went to a shopping mall in Beth, back in Bethlehem, a really tacky shopping mall where I shopped. And I photographed people outside the shopping mall, and in fact, they were sadder than the people at the Vietnam Memorial. I, I'm very ambivalent. I want you to know and care about the people I photograph or think about them, and I make it as clear as possible, and at the same time, it, it, I I'm not an advertisement. I'm not, I don't want to own your mind. I want you to, you will hopefully bring yourself to the picture. Um, I don't want to tell you what to think on one hand, and I do on the other hand. <laughs> and and uh, since you, the look, the viewer are entirely in charge, I can't say what will happen.
I pointed there, I've pointed at something, and I don't consider it me anyway. They're not my pictures. They're pictures that really work that I had a hand in making. They're not my pictures. They're pictures of those people. That's, I don't know how crazy that is. I actually believe they're of those people, which is completely not true. Those people are far more complex than anything that I showed you. It's just one little second of their life, and they went on and are doing something else. They're living, they're dead, I don't know. But it's a funny kind of arrogance. What you see is so important that, for me, maybe I don't think clearly, I think it's the truth. Well, it's a truth, it's something of truth. Thank you.